начнем. Всем привет. Let's get started. My name is Dmitry. I'm the developer engineer. We came here from Novosibirsk and would like to tell you about our experience in test automation in one of the projects and how we did from scratch. I'll tell you what we do and where we work. Group of company BKS provides broker services for more than 20 years and is now top on the Moscow Stock Exchange list. Our key product is the mobile application called My Broker. One can register in it, open up the broker's account right from home and uh, try how it feels to be an investor. A year ago, we have reached a new stage of development and we established a new department. Our target was to apply new architecture, new technology to the works that we had done before. We started from the team of two persons, one developer, one analyst, and one tester. And we could choose the way of further development. And that's why we started to think how to do it right from the beginning and what our ideal project will look like. We had an adventurous project ahead. We'll tell you what challenges we faced and we tell you how it all happened. We started from selecting the project architecture and the most advanced technologies. I'll briefly update you on the technologies which we are using, but this will not affect your further perception. We are at the moment using Java 8, and we are waiting until the 11th version is released, and to speed up the development process, we are using Spring Boot. AP interface is based on the QL and REST. This is all wrapped in the Docker and then deployed in the OpenShift. The data transfer for us is the Robert IQ. We store the data in the Kafka, but the microservices as themselves are being stored in Mongo and PSG. The safety output for us is the flip Oh, I just skipped Netflix. Here we This is something that we use as a tool to communicate within our cluster. And the last block, which we are using, is... Oh, by the way, could you tell me, please, if you have used it? This is quite a fair solution because such services are quite popular. Zipkin gives us the possibility to trace and log IP requests. I didn't mention the GitLab, and I didn't refer the GitLab to any of the categories listed here, because partly it somehow is connected to each of these categories. This seems to be one of the possible ideal structures for the developers and the QA engineers. But once we realized how we are going to write our microservices and how they are going to communicate with each other, we have come to the stage of testing. We analyzed the existing bug and found out that business functions get split into 100 microservices. In addition, there are a lot of integration with the external systems based on their database. That's why we started to think about automation. But how this automation could be done? It seemed to be expensive to write our own framework, and it's not reliable in the long-term perspective because we were only at the start of our project. That is why we decided to use already available tool. There is a family framework to test the frame AP, such as REST Assures, Jesse, RESTLIT. We best liked Unirest, but unfortunately we never used it because our company started to grow. We started to hire new teams and testers who were hired only had manual testing experience. They never wrote any codes, but at the same time they had expertise in stock exchange trade and uh, bond and shares. This is how life interfered with our plans, and we realized that we would require a tool for the IP automation without any single line of code. And the only candidate for this 
what's the API. As I have mentioned before, we have a lot of integration tools with other systems based on the available data. That's why we started to use data-driven test methodology. I wonder if anyone uses this. How many people are familiar with this approach? Excellent. This seems to be a little bit more. The approach means that we have a series of blocks and tests, which is managed by the data flow. So all checks are connected to the amount of data and to the blocks that we have submitted, and all is implemented during the testing cycle. But we could not implement DDI in the AP product without additional scripts. However, we got such a possibility in the paid version of this product, and that's why we decided to try AP Pro. We only had to take the real version to take the prototype type and see how it will work. Our prototype turned out to be successful, so we added SOAP UI Pro in our process. There are certain disadvantages in using this tool. In our case, this product still doesn't know how to use with the gRPC directly, but we still hope that soon the company Smart B will correct this this advantage, this fault. Apart from the data management, we got the possibility of test generation based on the API specification. We use Swagga file, and then the smock test basis is practically ready. Also, we managed to get the management of environment and test reports. SOAP UI Pro is delivered together with such products as Ready API. It's a set of uh, tools for the load tests and for the And every time we later mention this product, we will mean the SOAP UI Pro. Have you ever done any setup by yourselves of this Jenkins? Well, quite many people have already done this. I think you will agree that it's a wonderful feeling that something works out from the very beginning. Have you used the encyclopedia of Fortran professor? Who made this computer? That's cool. This is one of the first feelings which one has. And then remember the feeling when you're winning a game. And then remember the feeling when we have the first release of the working program. And uh, what happens when you see the first green pipeline? This pipeline has become the dream target for us as well. And this is the reason why we decided to set this up. Based on the GitLab, we did certain tests, and the only thing remaining was to add the API testing. That is why we decided to take all the services business-wise and process-wise, and we decided to launch them via Docker. At that time, we didn't have any red images. Now, Smart B company already has the image for the floating your pivotion and could be used, but we had to invent additional things. We were not the first one who started to do so. We searched on the internet what other people had done before, and we chose the most appropriate image and tried to launch it. And this is what we got. It's a monstrous animal, a beast, was trying to do the test within the container and didn't let us test the services, and the container just crashed. And now we realize that somebody who would calm this monster down, and this is how Dmitry joined our team, and he really fulfilled his obligations. So now I'll tell you about the radio AP and the Doka. Imagine that the Doka container is a cake. It's a nice cake. And each layer of this cake is a layer which we used to tame this wild beast. The first layer in this piece of cake is the license. Otherwise, we would not be able to launch this. The second and the 
biggest layer is the waiter mode, which is the actually open socket to blow up the pipeline and the container, and it's in a waiting mode to wait until the test plans are delivered to the ready API application to be further rolled out. This is a Python script, but we supported it with the GitHub users and made additional improvements. After which, we saw that everything works according to our wishes and we were able to relax. All other issues that we have encountered seemed just minor problems for us. For instance, we decided to use the ready-made PDF reports from API, and since we put all these versions in the Docker without the graphical interface, we had to attach a set of scripts to the image in order to generate the reports correctly. Also, while developing the APIs, we were using the GraphQL libraries. That's why to write the tests and not to go through all the fields in the manual mode, we generated it just from the testing line. Also, we had to add and upload the GraphQL libraries to support the service. Sometimes we also checked for correctness where the interim data is stored in an appropriate way, and that's why we had to use the drivers to get connected to the databases. Now a bit of theory. Docker is the containerization system. One of the key principles how it works has been just presented. Have you ever heard, have you ever touched the cube? Not many of you. It, I guess it will be easier for you. OpenShift is a system to dockerize the containers. It has the same Kubernetes but it has certain benefits. This tool rules our Docker containers, and Helm rules the releases, which is mentioned in the middle. It gives us the possibility to update the release and the shifts in the whole scope. Based on these three techniques, we got the following. The trigger to stop our pipeline is any change in the code. The first stage is to build the image. We pack our application with the help of their cities, then we go through the unit testing. After that, we check the quality of the test with the Siona cube, and after that, we do mutation testing. If all these steps are successful, then our image is sent to the GitLab registry. Next stage is deployment of isolated environment, isolated open shift environment. First thing which we do is that we use the updated latest version of help charts. If it's needed, we could add some customized interim values, such as the integration links or or whatever. After that, we identify the dependencies that might arise next to our microservices and then deploy it, this image in the open shift, as well as dependencies. The dependencies could be that ones of the business logic as well as the technical side. Then we also deploy their ready API container, and here it takes up the position of somebody who is waiting. And the last step in this process is the check of all containers to have the status ready. They are launched and they're ready to be tested. The final stage of the pipeline is testing itself. First thing, we include latest test plan versions, we deliver them to the ready IP application, and then stage by stage we set up the run smoke and run regress and run integration. Smoke test, check whether the service is alive or not, and if the smoke fails, there is no point in continuing with further tests. If the third stage of test was successful, we sent the reports, and reports have different forms. Anatech, we are working in, in 
и Scrum, and we use the Hail Fast principle, and uh, we don't do it entirely, but the first we try to do it, and then we develop it. We all had the same with the reporting. We started with console launches, and after launching tests, we could uh, identify the test suit finished, and then we could hope that it would be either pass or uh, we would be digging in logs. But we had more and more microservices, and we didn't want to, after night regress, to investigate the blogs for half a day, so we decided to send it to a chat. So in the morning, we could take a look at what tests were launched for, what services, and what was the status. But since these messages had the status that was very brief, we decided to go further and we used these PDF reports, and they are quite detailed and human-readable, and you can even share them with the management in order for them to see it, or you can attach it to the release launch. We have uh, a big number of uh, testers uh, who use them for investigating the bugs. And for your better understanding, we have a live presentation. We selected uh, a light and informative service. We recorded uh, the life cycle on video, and now we are going to watch it. In the first two stages are uh, packing of our application and sending it to the registry. They will take short to, to do it because uh, we have fast video recording. After that, we come to the deploy uh, of our service, and in the right-hand side of our screen, this is the OpenShift web interface. We will get the project automatically, where we can see the process of launching the microservice itself. For example, both microservices are in uh, uh, running, but not ready. And here, in same, we can see in the left-hand side of the screen the status of launching the microservices. I don't think we can see, see, we can see it. First, we, were wait, we are waiting for one, two pods and then one pod be loaded uh, for them to be in ready mode. And then once all the modes are on, then we can run the tests. The deploy of microservice from the launch and until readiness took us 1 minute 30 seconds. And during testing, in the right-hand side of the screen, we can see the process of testing of the service itself in the logs. There are logs there, but you can not see them. What else? Smoke test passed, and we uh, had it for 1 minute and 20 seconds. I've already mentioned that next to microservice we can see dependencies. There are no technical dependencies, and all dependencies of the business logic are deployed permanently, and they are not removed. And after, after running the test, the regress test, we, we will get a report that we're going to see later. So it took 3 minutes and 30, 20 seconds, and now the project is going to be automatically deleted. We can see this process. This happens for every match, and here in the chat we can see reports. Uh, this is the console report, as it is. This is a successful step. Can you see anything on the screen? Well, certainly it's a very small font. This is the regress test report. And uh, basically speaking, the very PDF reports are stored in the cloud. They are sorted by microservices and by uh, date and time. You can also open them. And we already have the complete process, and everything is done, and uh, it even writes to the chat. And now is the time to understand whether we had automation, whether the process that we launched was efficient. There are some general practices that will make automation more useful. First of all, these are isolated data preparing. 
So preparing it separately from running tests, which enables you to get pure expected outcomes, to know what we're going to get, and uh, we are supporting the DVT technology, and it's better to isolate not only data preparation, but also test themselves. And every test shall test only one functionality and shall not depend on the outcomes of running other tests and internal uh, varieties that we have inside. And uh, when, we I when we isolate this, sometimes we have to copy some of the parts, so in order not to reiterate the same steps, like repeating uh, operations by codes uh, from SMS, we decided to use standalone modules with the number of steps that you can call from the main script and then send the parameters that you would like to have, and then you launch it. And uh, when you have uh, such a log launched to several times, you have to assign unique names in order not to get messed and in order to identify bugs, uh, if there are any. Naturally, in such a situation, it was also important for us to have a certain time for running tests, because we were focused on fast outcomes and verification, and the number of microservices grew up, so within one night they had to be run all of them in order to be done by morning. And uh, this specification is also important, but they won't work if you don't have stable environments. The majority of the errors in tests are because of settings, not because of the real mistakes and errors in the code. Therefore, you have to watch the environment. You can do it by yourself, or you can ask development engineers to, to keep track of that. If you are sure about your environment, then you can be sure about the outcomes. We tested it in our first team, and therefore, We've created some golden standard in our department, and today our, we have four teams, and all of them are using this successfully, and new testers who come to us, to our teams, are very fast learners because we have standardized projects, and this is great because in about two weeks they start creating tests themselves using the infrastructure that we already have. And the advantage was also time to market of two weeks. Indeed, this is not a novelty, but in all financial companies, this is still to be a good uh, performance. Sometimes it is even less. So, indeed, we realize that in two weeks or even less, we can launch a service without um, compromising quality, without uh, escaping some te tests, just because we uh, lacked time. In any case, we have regress at night time, and in the morning we can see if somebody was late last night, one of the developers, and committed everything in the master, and then it broke. The earlier we identify an error, the faster we, uh, we correct it. And uh, concurrent test running. Since every microservice is uh, launched in a separate space, we can launch a big number of them concurrently, depending on our computing power. And uh, in addition to the benefits of Scram, we can also get some carrots for our team or donuts. And, uh, for example, somebody wants to integrate some little feature, and it's not necessary to come to you to approve it. You just uh, commit this, and then the tests uh, will be checking it, and the developer will get the outcomes. Based on that, our QA engineers have more time to develop tests themselves. And we very much like when our product owner smiles. And the product owner smiles when he or she comes early in the morning to see green tests passed, and then he or she is satisfied. Moreover, the person is even more satisfied when he or she can see that the reports have beautiful PDF files that are human readable. So this is it. On the left-hand side, we have a link to the GetWeb project. There we have our Docker file. And if you're interested in this or you want to use it and find it useful to you, then it will be great. On the right-hand side, we have our 
contact details, so don't be shy to write us. We're very happy that all of you came here today, many more people than we expected, and in fact that was our first presentation. Therefore, we are very thankful to you. Thank you very much for your attention and looking forward to your questions. We have quite a lot of time for questions and answers, so get ready. Thank you very much for your presentation, for the interesting speech. I have been working for a long time in fintech field as a development engineer. Since you are working in the fintech, we can see that the environments change, there are events in stock exchanges and the various stock exchange funds have changes. And do you let QA engineers not only to get information from developers, but also from lawyers, traders, and other non-technical people in order for them to make rapid and stable environment? In fact, yes. This is a very sensitive uh, topic. This is a very uh, sensitive area because we, have sp we speak about stock exchange and everything is automated. Any novelties, especially if we speak about any wording and language, everything is tested by lawyers and also it is processed by analysts and uh, there are huge uh, issues and uh, we keep a serious track of that. We cannot say that it happens fast because there are lots of people, especially if we speak about lawyers, then you can get stuck on the level of lawyers, but in fact this process is very smooth on our side. Good afternoon, thank you very much for your presentation, it was very interesting. Please say, what is the structure of the test of your project and why not Allure uh, of the PDF report? Thank you. In fact, we are still thinking about uh, what uh, shall be the outlook of the reports and you can always improve. Uh, we have the fail-fast principle that we are mostly applying and in the meantime Allure is still a convoluted tool for us in order to put down all the tags and everything. We don't need this at the moment, but maybe we will use it in the future. We also have this idea. Now speaking about the structure of the tests, we basically have such testing tools as smoke, regress, integration. These are the most important ones. Inside them, we can see the trees. I can draw it on a flip chart if you are really interested in this in order to show you something like a screenshot. In the Ready IP, we also have the tree with the headings, with the description of cases. So we are not using any system in order to store our cases. Everything is developed right inside. Well, I don't mean that we develop it, but the most, uh, the, the biggest advantage for us in this tool is the uh, opportunity to use the graphic interface. And when it is necessary, we can also use scripts in order to add something on top. Therefore, these are the three blocks, uh, smoke progress and integration that we run. It's not topical for all services. Some of them are very technical and they are not interrelated with other systems, but this is our backbone and the three pillars. Thank you very much for the report. My name is Anastasia. And my, my question, why Ready API? Why not Postman? Okay, we actually tried Postman, we just didn't show it in our presentation. Just for us. So API is a more complex solution than Postman. And uh, in the paid fashion, all these DDD features seemed for us really necessary and they seem to us appealing. This is why we used it. Could I ask the second question, please? Which wow feature we could add for you to continue Radio API? I'd say that you could do the support of the JPC. That's a really needed feature. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you very much for the presentation. I really like the picture on the slide with the ideally flat surface, which means you have a completely flat environment and we can evaluate it, assess on a GitLab. This is actually what we wanted to do, but let's see what we have as the outcome. My question is really linked to the previous one. I'm more interested in the integration tests, but I have not seen in your slides how much time it takes for them to be performed. Well, unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated with the integration tests because a lot of integrations are to be done with other systems, but we are not responsible for the integration with other systems. We're only responsible for our own ones. In not all the cases, they are present and set up in the due manner. Sometimes some of the environment just fail and not available for the for a month. Sometimes it all happens via the data exchange pattern. It depends on how fast the system will process our request. Sometimes the range could be quite big, varying from three seconds up to 15 minutes. Thank you. The second question is that coming back in support of Postman and in defense of the system, they also support the uploading of the data via the VS file. Our major focus is on the graphic interface. We asked some of the testers who have been working in the company for quite a long time. These were manual testings, and for them, so IPI seems to be simpler. They learn how to use this tool faster, and they learn how to perform tests within this tool faster. That was the key rationale for the selection. Thank you. And my question is also about testing. You mentioned that sometimes tests are done during one minute. Sometimes it takes one night to to perform the tests. It's not it's not the whole night. It just happens on a nightly basis. It happens every night. We only demonstrated to you one of the example based on the microservices. Could you please? Tell us how many tests, how many microservices do you have? 20 to 30, I can say. And of course, tests are different and microservices are different. Some of the technical tests could be performed within 30 seconds. Some services perform business functionalities, and that's why they transmit more business calculations. They are more serious. But on average, it takes about 10 minutes. I'd like to know how you managed to do so. We can't tell you, it just worked. This is something aside from our presentation today. This is the subject for a separate discussion. You say that usually the manual testers produce tests. Could you bring an example? What exactly you test and what uh, what do you include in the test plan? Is it a status? Do you check the structure? Do you take the data content? For instance, the data should be null, or maybe the age should be negative. How deep are you in this testing process? Could you please just tell me something about the test design? Functional testing is performed in the full scale quite often. And in these cases, we support complex logics. There are a number of requirements, conditions that have to be considered. So we check the response statuses, meaning how their services respond, including with the help of the API service, because it has the functionality to cover the requests on the status of the request. We validate the responses by ourselves via the functional test. We check which fields have to be filled in. And uh, it's not a secret for you that we are working in the financial sector. And uh, you see that in the banking sector, in the trade exchange sector, the data fields are huge. And that is why the conditions and for the monitoring are quite tough. And there are a lot of them. Thank you for the report. Could you explain us if there 
test scripts are easy to convert or change in the GitLab. Are they XML or different ones? We actually do not have that many of the script ships, only in rare cases when we have the user interface. So the project is stored as an XML file. It's not really comfortable. It's not very convenient, to be honest. We used to have it as the one XML file, but now in the latest versions of API, there is the file called composite project, and each case is stored in a separate file, and it, they could be committed during execution separately. The question is whether we have the experience of testing asynchronized APIs. In fact, we have quite many of them, and the solution is that through the data contact pad is used, and we sometimes are using the covers from other systems. Some more questions? Thanks a lot for a great presentation. If I may, if I, I, may I would like to I'd ask like in English. English. Yeah, OK. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm able to communicate, able to in, English. communicate in English. So what we, uh, we use, uh, we use GitLab, uh, GitLab with Postman. With Postman. I was wondering, I was wondering uh, if we uh, use Ready API, can we, API? Can we do some performance testing as well? Um, performance testing uh, is, uh, is planning, uh, planning, but, uh, but uh, we, uh, we haven't uh, seen uh, uh, think about this seriously. Also, we, also um, we um, seek, uh, seek uh, another, another instrument like Gmetr like or Gatling, and, and it's more likely, it's more likely that, that we'll, we'll, we will use we'll Gatling in, in the future. But uh, uh, maybe you maybe can, you after can this after presentation, this presentation uh, perform uh, something perform about, about uh, GitLab, uh, GitLab and, and performance testing. <laughs> So, if there are no more questions, thank you very much for questions and for the answers, and let's select the best question. I'd happily give the present, the T-shirt, to each of you. People, could you please stand up, everyone who asked the question? Oh, let's choose the most tricky one. <laughs> 